In Botmock, we made it dead simple to design, prototype, and test your Google Assistant projects to create the best possible experience that you can and get something set up for users to test potentially or for you to work with a team to get it going. Let's jump into this Google Assistant project that I've created and go over what's unique in the Botmock editor to Google Assistant projects so that you can create that best experience as possible. Let's start with the bot says block, which has always starts with each project. And this one is unique, as you can see, actually right here. It's unique to the design of uh, Google Assistant based uh, conversational interfaces. And we're going to jump right in and we can add some text. So we'll do this is an example pro uh, demo project, something like that. And initially, Google Assistant will not talk back to you as it does with Alexa. But if we add something to our audio output right here, then it will. You can also choose audio files that will override the audio output and instead have a different response come out. So right now it's going to be able to say both. And of course, with every project, you'll have the ability to change um, assignment, you know, the label here and revisions and the delays as well. We'll hit save right here. Then we'll jump into user says, which is that user reply. Um, again, it won't necessarily talk unless you have an audio output. We can say, thanks for the welcome. Let's say the user says something like that. And if you want it to be a Google home based project, then right here, thanks for the welcome. And now it will talk back and you can sort of simulate a conversation between a mock user and a mock bot. So we'll hit save here. Next up, we have the card, which may, there it is right here. It is the replacement for the media type that you might see in other projects, but in, in Google Assistant's case, in Google Assistant projects rather, it, you can have a little bit more information in sort of a card format to show media off. So for example, here we'll show off a, a bit of a meta image here of Google Home itself, and then we'll go to this is your card title. So let's say it's the Google Home. We're just showing off a product. Um, it is the Google Home. And then some get started text. This is a cool, you know, this is a cool gadget right here. And then you can have a URL as well, of course, and the audio output, which can basically talk back anything you want it to from this media image um, as well. So, and then audio files, of course, available. So we'll hit save right here. Next up, we shall go to carousel slash cards. So essentially, now you can create a collection of different cards with images. Um, that will go through and essentially show off a bit of a carousel style uh, format here. So we can choose an image once again. We can do something just like this. And this time it can be, you know, something like image one right here. And then you can add a description or that subtitle type thing as well. So this is the first image. And then you can add a few right here as we go through. So uh, for now, we're just going to keep it to one, or actually, we'll, we'll, we'll make a couple. So we'll add another one with an interesting image right here. And we'll do something like this. It's food, we'll call it. And then this is food. And there we go. We'll keep it to a couple of, uh, we'll keep it to a couple of slides here. So just like that. And then an audio output, of course, to go over all of this as well, if you need it, that you can either type out or upload. So that stays consistent. Next up. We'll move to a list and a list is essentially a neat way of doing sort of a, a card style format thing, but it's more, uh, it's more button based. So these, these are probably things that will be, uh, more like your buttons. And of course you can have, uh, images titles. You know, we have some example here, um, with the number 42. So, um, there we go. And then you can have a, a list title as well. So, uh, you know, something it's like interesting facts or whatever you need it to be and we'll keep it just like that and then of course you can upload your images and show it off as well and you can connect them like buttons as you would another project so if you click one of these it can go to certain content blocks depending on which one you click last but not least we have suggestion chips and i do want to mention that the jump block and the note block are can be used in google assistant projects but are not unique to google assistant projects so they're covered in separate videos and you can go to those videos and use them across all your different kinds of botmark projects, not just for Google Assistant. So we're not going to cover those today in this video. Um, we're going to finish up with suggestion chips. And suggestion chips are essentially your mini buttons, no images, no subtitles, just simple, uh, you know, buttons with a audio output that you can have running over it as well. So we'll do one, two, three, as you can see, something very simple. And then you can have your 
audio output as well, however you want it. So it can even be something like, please select a button. And that's, and that's that. So I've mixed in a little bit of audio files in this, and I have um, also kept them out just to show you that this can come out in a couple of different ways. But essentially, if we get started here, we'll be able to, let's make sure that this has an audio output. Perfect. We can now run a demo, which is a little bit unique. But before we run into the demo, I want to show the settings that are unique to Google Assistant as well. So we'll go up here. In this case, you can name your Google Assistant bot. So we'll call it um, My G Assistant Bot instead. And this is more of something that will be simulated. It's not necessarily something that uh, needs to show up if you're doing voice-based experiences, but if you're doing something that's with a uh, with a more with one of the newer Google Homes that has a screen as well. This is nice to see. And then, of course, custom error messages and avatars can be added as well uh, or customized as well. So we'll save images. We'll save changes here rather and jump into the run where we can see. The this is thing. an example demo project. As you can hear, it will talk and then it should in a moment. Thanks for the welcome. You can, you know, have that simulation of a user talking. This back. is a cool gadget. Of course, here again, I've uh, set it the car to speak to us. And then a few things showed up here. Please select a button. And there's that final thing. So we have a few things here that, that didn't need to speak because I didn't add an audio output. But of course, you'll be able to run through the carousel as a slide here. Um, if this had a link, you will be able to open it up and simulate a link here. And then, of course, um, you know, you can select these buttons to make something happen. We didn't quite do that, but that is covered in a separate video about content blocks in general. And when you have button options in your connectors. So that's something important. And then of course, here are your buttons that you can click as well. So in total, that is Google Assistant and how to prototype and design Google Assistant projects. And of course, you can do usability testing and whatever you need to do uh, as well for them. But these are all the things that are more unique in terms of design and prototyping that you can see easily with BotMod. Thank you very much.